All right, I'm going to be cooking this big, kind of ugly butternut squash. I don't know if you can, I don't know if, I, don't, I actually don't even know what that is. Maybe somebody watching can tell me what that is. Uh, but this is, as far as I know, an organic squash. It is from my aunt's farm, not super far from here. Um, so who knows why it looks like that? Like I said, I don't know. Hopefully one of you guys can tell me. But I think it's probably good enough to... Uh, to be able to use for the purposes of today. Squash? Absolutely, Paul. Um, so the first step that I'm going to do is just chop off the ends, and then fork it and put it in the microwave. And then hopefully we can just cut around that ugly thing. And I hope it'll be okay. I've made this a bunch on my channel um, in like either videos or in uh, live streams. So you guys probably already know what this recipe is. Actually, if you can tell me what you think the recipe is, let me know because, like I said, I've made this before many times. On my channel. And in real life. Not on the channel, too. <laughs> um, okay, so that's it. Just chop that off, the ends. Now I'm just going to fork this and hope for the best as far as it not being um, bad. <laughs> so I know this is like just barely, like my head's chopped off and what I'm doing is chopped off. But um, I just sort of put a bunch of fork holes in here and I'm going to put it in the microwave for like four minutes or so. Really, I'm just trying to make it easier for me to peel in a couple minutes. Um, it's it's a thick one. I don't know if I want, yeah, probably just four minutes because I'm really just like warming up the outside kind of to make it easier to peel. I don't really have to worry about the inside because it's going to cook in the Instant Pot. No way, you're cooking. Yeah, it's the first on my channel, right? <laughs> My name is Esteban. <laughs> Hello, Greg. What's up, guys? Yeah, Happy New Year, everyone. Um, today's actually been very productive for me, especially since like I did not have like any sleep last night. I stayed up late, and then I couldn't sleep in, so I just had to get up early, um, unfortunately. Uh, so next ingredient is an onion quartered. It says white onion. I don't think it needs to be white onion. This is not a white onion, but that's okay. A lot of this recipe is like not super exact anyway because the main ingredient is a squash and it just says one butternut squash. And they could be many different sizes. So uh, that's the nice thing about this recipe is it's very hard to mess up. I have I have yet to mess it up. And also I, because this um, angle is so weird from where I am, I it's like my head's chopped off and what I'm doing is chopped off. Let's see if I can at least show you guys what I'm doing and maybe my maybe my head can be chopped off or something are you guys making any food today oh actually do you guys have any sort of like uh, what are you, are you guys doing anything for New Year's like any New Year's resolutions or any plans for the year what are you guys doing what are you leaving behind or what are you what do you want to accomplish this year I want to at least take this onion paper off. Um, okay, so just quarter that. Uh, and actually, I'm going to put the oil in now. Either you know, two tablespoons of olive oil. Try this oil free. It's definitely not as good, to be honest. Um, a lot of times I do butter um, instead, but I'm just going to go with oil this time. And I was talking about this with people yesterday. Uh, if I say just butter or cream cheese or something like that, and I don't specify that it's vegan, I will get comments from people saying like, well, you were vegan, are you no longer vegan? But then if I say, uh, you know, vegan butter or vegan cream cheese or vegan meat or whatever, then people go, well, yeah, I mean, you're, you're Noah Craig, we know that you're vegan. So <laughs> it's kind of like damned if I do, damned if I don't. <laughs> but it is vegan butter. Lots of paper on this one. All right. I also have a cut on my finger. Um, oddly enough, I I cut my finger on. I don't know how well you can see that, but I cut that on like um, playing cards last night, <laughs> which they were apparently very sharp. I'm gonna exist this year. Hell yeah. Um, 
what do you all think he is making? Nacho cheese. Mm, that The cheese part is not far off. Working on my sea glass and driftwood are interesting. So what sort of things do you make with this uh, driftwood art? It's like abstract stuff or like cool lamp fixtures. So we have onion in there. While we're waiting for that to be almost done in like 10 seconds, I'll just throw in this clove of garlic. You know, it says one clove, mine's throwing at least two cloves. Because heck it. These are big cloves though too, so we're just going to double it. We're not going to tri triple or quadruple it. Paper cuts are the worst. Yeah, these are card cuts specifically. Like I, so we we're playing. What do you meme? I don't know if you guys ever played that game, but it's kind of like Cards Against Humanity, but with memes. And um, I just had them in my hand, and I like had them in one hand, and I was like was just like going like as I don't know, just like moving them up and down, and then they cut my finger all of a sudden. I was like, ooh, didn't know, didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> with cards. Oh my god, there's so much paper on this garlic too. I, and I usually, not usually, but sometimes I do that trick where, like, you just shake it in a container of some kind and it gets all the paper off, but it's just, like, one or two, and I didn't really feel like having to wash a container after that. All right. Now we're done. Hopefully we're all done with papery things. Um, okay. This looks about how it usually looks. Let's see how easy it'll be to... Maybe it could be a little bit easier for another two minutes. Okay. All right, so we're done with the garlic. The, I don't think anyone's guessed. I don't think anyone's guessed accurately what is that I'm making yet. The nacho is not super far off. Some abstract, some interpretive, some realistic. Interesting, okay. Garlic smash, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so the, that's the cool thing. I actually, you'll see why later, but I actually don't need to do anything. Uh, like, I can put in, like, a whole clove for this recipe. Um, making the deck with my wine. <laughs> um, thanks, Alice. <laughs> Spaghetti? No. Okay, so let's throw in a half a cup of cashews. Soup? Um, okay, we're we're getting close, so it's kinda in between soup and nacho cheese, I guess you can say. <laughs> Alright, so that half a cup of cashews. A quarter cup of nutritional yeast. Hopefully you guys are getting like a little bit closer as you see the recipe unfolding. Oh, I love smelling everything before I cook with it. Okay, I'm gonna do a half a cup, I know, a quarter cup of nooch. Should be good. Maybe wait for it to cool down a little bit. But I can continue just adding all the other ingredients. Uh, lasagna. No. Oh, Harpo got it. Mac and cheese. Butternut squash, mac and cheese. Casserole of some kind. Nope. A pie with squash as the shell. Interesting. Happy New Year's to you, Kitty. Um, smash squash casserole. No. <laughs> I've never heard of that before. And thank you, Crystal, for sending that uh, that super chat. Fifty dollars. Thank you. Very, it's very generous of you. Um, or I should I should say this so you can see my face. Thank you, Crystal, for sending that super chat. 
I really appreciate that. And Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to all you guys. But thank you, Crystal, very much. Um, okay. Let's do half a teaspoon of nutmeg. And then one teaspoon dried rosemary. So we'll do a half teaspoon nutmeg. This actually really, really makes the recipe. Like it's it's just a small touch, but it really goes a long way with the half a teaspoon of nutmeg. It is not something that I expected before. I, when I first saw this recipe, I was like, what? Uh, okay, so I think it's one teaspoon of the dried rosemary. So we'll, I don't really feel like washing another one. I'm just doing that so you guys can see, but I'm definitely getting rosemary everywhere. At least it's not like hard to clean up. And I cleaned off my counter earlier, so I can just wipe it off. There we go. So vegan mac and cheese, yummy. Yes. Hey, AJ. All right, so back to seeing stuff over here that you can actually see. Uh, okay, we did that. So it's mustard. So we have most of the ingredients while I'm waiting for the squash to cook. This is a pretty quick recipe, especially if you have a um, an instant pot like I do. I've definitely made it before in the uh, slow cooker, um, but it's obviously significantly faster um, if you do it in the instant pot. You gotta get that mustard all the way down. Let's see how many. One teaspoon of mustard. All right. Okay. Yeah, that's about a teaspoon. <laughs> you know, what? I should put that back upside down. Hmm. Okay. Tablespoon of salt. Which sounds like a lot, but it's actually not a super salty recipe. All right, where did I put the salt? Were you guys using the salt last? All right. I'm gonna do this off camera because it's just over the instant pot. Oh my God, that's like all that I got left in the shaker. Gotta fill that up after. Uh, don't let me forget. And then, all right, so then we'll just add in, I think it's basically just this and vegetable stock. That's everything. Yeah, I already did everything. Oh, yeah. See how fast this recipe is? Um, I do have this vegetable broth that I got from this company called Gore, Gourmand. They have low FODMAP broth, which I guess is kind of hard to find. Uh, it's just like for people, if you have di uh, digestive issues with FODMAPs, uh, it doesn't have things like uh, garlic or um, onions in it, stuff like that. Although there are gar garlic and onions in this recipe, so this is not necessarily a low FODMAP recipe. But uh, I did want to show uh, me trying this. And then also um, I'll just try just a little bit before I put it in because I think it has a little bit more than what I need for today's recipe. Um, so I have to peel the squash. Or maybe I'll just peel it here and then throw the stuff right in the garbage. This is still quite toasty. So I'm sculpting a squash. Do you guys have any squash? Oh, what do you guys do with squash? And what kind of squash do you guys get? Because I have an acorn squash. Still got to figure out what I want to do with it. I made stuffed acorn squash earlier this year, but I don't know if there's like another recipe that I could do with it. Because I'd like to try something else too. Yeah, I have no idea what that like, this like glaze looking thing was that was like on the squash. It was weird. I've never seen that before. Let's see how deep this blemish goes. Hmm. Don't look super deep.
Acorn soup. Oh, okay. That's not a bad idea. Yeah, maybe I could try some uh, some squash soup or something. Yeah, I made. Um, oh, that was a good one. That's a big. That's the biggest peel so far. <laughs> All right, let's see if I can do one from like top to bottom. Ow, nope. It just. I think it's because it the thing just like wants to go like that. It doesn't want to go back down after. Oh, that was a big one. It's even longer than the other one. All right, so this is the new one to beat. All right. All right, I don't know if it'll get any longer than that because that was basically just top to bottom. <laughs> That's pretty good. All right, back to work. I've never tried squash. I have any kind of squash? Acorn squash is easier compared to butter. Um, like easier to prepare, easier to cook with, or what? Now I'm gonna put. I just washed this glove, but I'm gonna put this on because it's a cutting glove, but it also. Um, We'll protect me a little bit from how hot this thing is, because it's still a little bit toasty on the fingers. Oh yeah, that's definitely a bit of a blemish too there. Yeah, because I got this uh, acorn squash from my aunt's farm, like, on, on Thanksgiving Day. And I don't know how long ago she picked it before then. Because um, it was just, like, sitting there, and it said free, uh, free squash. I got an acorn squash and this one. So... I'm gonna finally use it because I know squash lasts a long time, but I think it would definitely have less blemishes if I just used it sooner. But uh, leading up to Christmas, they're just like very busy. I'm sure that's the case with a lot of you guys too. Have you guys been busy with like just Christmas plans, New Year's plans, stuff like that? Titan makes fantastic peelers. Be careful with them, though. Titan. Are they, like, super sharp? I'm learning here. Never cook banana squash. Spaghetti has so many seeds and hard to cut. Happy New Year. How are you? I'm great. Uh, nope. Not had any squash at all. Interesting. Hmm. It's, uh, I don't know how you describe it. It's, like, not pumpkin-y. It's definitely, like, starchy. It's not quite like a potato, though. It's, like, kind of more stringy. Um, than a potato. Uh, a lot of squashes have different textures though. Like spaghetti squash, like someone else just mentioned, is definitely going to be um, significantly different than this. I had spaghetti squash in, I want to say October, the last time I had it. Right, it's almost done. Not too many blemishes on here either. So this should be a little bit easier to cut too, um, because I did microwave it, but it's still kind of tough to cut just because it's such a thick boy. Again. Yeah, I definitely recommend this recipe. I tried this once years ago and I just you may just make it all the time because it's so it's so easy to make. It's like very cheap, it's very quick, uh, and it tastes really good too. Easy to cook with acorn squash than butternut. Okay, butternut you need to go to battle with to get it open. Yeah, you guys are gonna see in just a second. You're absolutely right. That one is smooth and sweet. Okay. Yes, Titan peelers are super sharp. Okay, good to know. Amazon for Titan. Okay, yeah, I I would be interested to know where to get them too. Ain't that the truth? I remember that from my working days. Okay. All right. So the seeds should be down on like this this half. I think I lost track of which side was the top, and which side was the bottom. Uh, 
But I think uh, here. Okay, this is not so bad because I, like I said, I microwaved it earlier. And this is, this is a relatively sharp knife. Okay, so I got almost all the way down to like where the seeds are. That's not bad. I like using an ice cream scoop to get them out. Yeah, so this is like the stringy part, kind of like a pumpkin, like where all the seeds are. All right, so I'm just going to chop this in half and scoop her all out into the garbage. All right, that was pretty easy. That was, yeah, that was pretty easy to get all the seeds out. All right, let me just chop this. So these just have to be kind of like one inch cube kind of things. It's just so that they get evenly cooked. It's not really, it doesn't have to be like all that precise. Sweep. I already swept and mop earlier today because I had a um, New Year's party last night, so I had to, somebody spilled champagne here in the kitchen last night. Uh, it was very sticky. So I was on a cleaning rampage earlier today. So it'll be good to have a clean house and food in the fridge after today. Butternut squash carrot ginger soup. Ooh, with cashew cream. That sounds very good. Now you're making me want to buy more squash. <laughs> or talk to my aunt, see if she's got any extra other squash. Hmm. Yeah, it's a little bit of a blemish. That's not bad. It's gonna be it's gonna be all mixed in anyway. I won't even notice all the blemishes and stuff. This is, a, this is like one of the thickest um, butternut squashes I've ever experienced in my life. It's just like, I don't know, that's just very thick for it being just like half of it. I'm going to turn this over. There we go. It'll be a little bit more manageable. Yeah, this might even be more than enough squash as it is. Might, might save this one for something else. <laughs> we'll see. Oh, this is like a very not exact recipe, so I think it'll be fine if we have extra. Yeah, let's throw it in. I'm definitely going to have enough that I can freeze this afterwards. I can have some later on. Because I feel like the biggest barrier for me eating healthy is just having food that's healthy and readily available like when I'm hungry. Because when I'm hungry is when I'm like, you know what? I don't care about health. I just want to not be hungry anymore. <laughs> and then I grab something that is just uh, much 
more quickly prepared and not the healthiest. So I know myself and it's like, it's weird. It's like I get shocked every day that I get hungry three times a day. Like you'd think that I'd figure out by now, hey, maybe have lunch prepared. <laughs> so I'm trying, I'm trying to be better about that. Pretty much all chunks. All right, there we go. That's it. Then we just add the broth and then put it in. The, oh man, look at! I'm gonna show you guys how full this is. It's just filled to the brim, and then there's you can see the other ingredients underneath it. Maybe there's so much. <laughs> It's, it's hard to show you guys. It's like just filled. All right, so this we're gonna do, I believe, two cups. It's nice, actually. I have um, the phone right here, and I have one laptop for uh, all your guys' comments and stuff, and I have another laptop for the recipe. Because usually I would have to go back and forth between the recipe and comments, but I have a very old laptop that I can just hold the recipes up on. Uh, okay, so two cups of vegetable stock. Um, I'm actually not going to make any macaroni elbows because I'm probably going to be cooking um, like high protein, like red lentil stuff when I'm making this, uh, when I eat it like for lunch. And I don't really like reheating that stuff. I don't know if you guys have ever made like bean pastas, but I just don't like how they reheat. So I will cook them as necessary. Um, but I at least will have the sauce ready. And it takes like a couple minutes just to boil some bean noodles. So let's see, we did the onion, we did the squash, we did the cashews, we did the nooch, garlic, rosemary, nutmeg, olive oil, mustard, salt. Yeah, so just two cups. And like I said, this is slightly more than what I need. So I'm just gonna pour it into, actually I could probably, I could absolutely use the, um, everything in here because there's so much in that pot. Uh, I just want to see how much 16.9. So that's got to be like 16.9 fluid ounces. So that's got to be basically three cups. I don't know why they didn't just do three cups. Okay, so it says squeeze here. I don't like this. Oh, interesting. And then do you, it kind of reminds me of like, when I was in school and I used to drink milk. <laughs> it just says squeeze here. It says lift here. This side says lift here. This side says squeeze here. Do not microwave container. To open first, squeeze corners together, then tear along the dotted line. Okay, yeah, you know what? I just need to read the instructions. <laughs> oh, there we go. That's easy. how much extra I get. Oh, you know what? I'm dummy. It's 16.9 fluid ounces, not 16.9 cups. <laughs> yeah, I just a little bit of this. So you guys can see my reaction instead of me having to move the camera. I'll just go down here. It's not very, it's not salty at all. It's a like pretty low sodium. Yeah, there's like almost no sodium in here. Just, it must be just naturally occurring sodium. Um, for not having any sodium, it's pretty flavorful. It has all, it's all in their organic ingredients. Um, I actually do have a link to this in the description if you guys are interested. Um, you can you know, use code, I believe it's no eggs and get like 15% off for your first purchase. Um, or just any purchase. I don't know. I'll, I'll have to look into that. But I know you can get 15% off if you use code NOEGS uh, if you want to check out. They have some other uh, stuff. It's not just broth. They also gave me, what was it? Some seasonings. They didn't, They have, I believe, other seasonings as well. But this is a green onion salt and a garlic chive 
powder. This is low FODMAP certified though. And it's garlic chives. Or maybe that's different than garlic. But interesting anyway. So I'm just gonna pour this into here and see if we can actually if I can actually show you guys. Maybe let's go like this. I do wish that this um, phone had like a wider angle. Actually, let me let me see if I can do something real quick. Uh, no, nope, that's closer in. No, well, this is as wide as we're gonna get. Uh, all right, so then I'm just gonna pour in the very little left. Hopefully that's enough, because <laughs> like I said, that is filled with uh, more butternut squash, I think, than usual even. Um, but we're just going to put the top on here, hope for the best, and it's, so it's either four hours uh, on high with a slow cooker, or eight hours on low, or it's actually with pressure cook. Four, it must have been the last time I did pressure cook. I must have done this because it's for just four minutes. So we're just going to put that on high. Uh, and I think we're going to... Yeah, this is sealed. And then we'll just switch it to vent uh, when it's ready. But this is... It. Is, it, is it digestible? Um, so it's, it's all like low FODMAP stuff. So if you have any problems digesting FODMAP uh, things, then this is actually a really good uh, alternative for you. Green onion salt sounds good. Yeah. You know what? I should, uh, should try just a little bit. Hmm. So this is the green onion salt. I keep chopping my own head off. Hmm. Oh, yeah, that's salty. It kind of tastes almost like broth. Like the kind of stuff you would put in broth, but uh, literally the only ingredient is organic negi scallions, green tops only, and sea salt. Um, that would taste really good in like a soup, I think. Um, it's, it seems like a lot of stuff they have is like very soup friendly. Uh, so if you want to make soups, <laughs> this is a good company to know. Um, let's see, garlic chive powder. So I don't know. This was probably going to be more of a seasoning. That was definitely seasoning slash salt. So we'll try this one too. Garlic chive powder. That's, that was really good salt, actually. I want to put on stuff. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. so this is just like, kind of like a green, like an interesting green powder. I feel like, hmm. The other one probably just tasted so good immediately because there was salt on it and salt is like the flavor enhancer. Whereas like, uh, you know, other seasonings are, they'll do what they, their, their job is to like change the flavor profile uh, as far as like the actual flavor. Uh, salt is just like the enhancer. So we'll see. Hmm. Kind of smells like ramen -y. Yep, not as much flavor. I think just because it's not salty. I think if there was, if I added some salt to that, it would probably like bring out the flavor even more. Um, it's, it tastes kind of like earthy. Um, doesn't taste super garlicky. But I, I can definitely see that being like really good in like a ramen or something like that, that ingredient. Um, so like I said, uh, if you guys want to check out this company, they have a bunch of like seasonings, uh, all low FODMAP things. That's like their thing. Um, then definitely check that out in the description and you can use code no eggs and get 15% off your whole purchase. So definitely check that out. Uh, now I'm going to have to clean up. So hopefully I can clean up by the time this is done. It says it takes only like four minutes. And actually, no, I should take this time to at least read some of you guys' comments and maybe answer them as I'm putting some stuff away. Cut the corner. I don't even know which. Oh, when you guys when I was struggling to open up the box, <laughs> Greg is really strong to cut like that. <laughs> oh, the squash. 
That, uh, that squash was actually easier to cut than I thought. I don't know if it's because this knife, this is like one of my sharper knives. Um, and I also microwaved it, so that definitely helps too, quite a bit. I'm making black-eyed peas. I don't have the regular greens, but I have one of those big square cabbages. I've never heard of that before. They're really cool. They taste very different than regular cabbage. I have a ton of veggies. Um, I have a ton of fruit right now. Uh, <laughs> I have some veggies. I have like for vegetables. Well, I still have the acorn squash. I have like rainbow carrots. They're really pretty cool. Um, there's like a bag of like orange, yellow, and purple carrots. Uh, I also have like some sweet potatoes. I got some broccoli in my fridge. Uh, some mushrooms that I desperately need to eat if they're not bad yet. <laughs> um, but you know what's interesting is like because I mostly post like me eating vegan chicken and, and stuff like that. I think a lot, I get a lot of comments of people saying that I don't eat my vegetables, um, but I absolutely do. But it's just because everybody knows that carrots are vegan. So I don't usually be like, hey guys, this is how, how you eat carrots as a vegan. That's <laughs> pretty easy. Everyone knows that carrots are vegan. Prepare and freeze. Yes, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm definitely going to freeze some of this butternut squash sauce. Yeah, you all, Linda, you also don't think about food until you're hungry and then you eat peanut butter on toast and call it a meal. Yeah, because uh, once you get to a certain point, you're like, I don't care what it tastes like. I just don't want to be hungry anymore. That's all I want is to not be hungry. My freezer is half burrito? What? <laughs> Green onion salt sounds good. Yeah, it was good. Welcome back, Esteban. Was there garlic? Oh, in the recipe? Yeah, I put two pretty big cloves in there. I am a certified personal trainer now. And I think that's pretty cool. That's awesome. Good for you, man. Are you training anyone? Have you started yet? I should try FODMAP due to my IBS, but it seems like I couldn't eat what I wanted. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it would definitely be good to figure out at least what works and what doesn't, and then you can decide, is it worth it for me? But I think it would be better to know if something works or if it doesn't. Um, and also I think a lot of people um, underestimate like how much what you eat is kind of sort of starts to become like what you crave because your microbiome will actually change and your microbiome actually has a lot to do with um, what you'll actually crave. Uh, Cause a lot of times, yeah, like you, you do want things, but a lot of times the bacteria in your gut is kind of like, you know what? We really want that uh, vegan burger that you had the other day. We want that again cause you had it. Uh, but if you don't feed your gut those things, your gut won't crave those things. If you start changing your diet, then your palate changes as well. So if you start eating like a low fat FODMAP diet, you probably will be, and especially in the beginning, it'll probably be hard. But um, I don't, I don't follow a low FODMAP diet. I don't even know exactly what it would be. So I'm just going off of like, you know, when I first went vegan and there was like stuff that I couldn't eat, you know, when anytime you restrict your diet a bit, then it's, you know, you're, you're going to have to go through some sort of change of like what you're eating. But if it can help your IBS, then that would definitely be useful. But you aren't supposed to avoid these those foods forever. You are supposed to figure out which foods are pumped for you. Yeah, that'd be like, uh, I know someone who did like a um, elimination diet. Uh, those I think are like very helpful if you are having any sort of issues because then you can at least figure out what you need to eliminate. And then you can add back in the things that you don't necessarily have to eliminate. Um, it's better to not eliminate things you don't have to because it's probably going to be hard enough if you can't eat like a whole bunch of food groups. Okay, let's see. Oh, you know what? I love these uh, uh, measuring cups so much. I don't want to put them all back together because some of them are dirty and I don't want to get them mixed in. Um, but these these came as like a set and I don't know, you probably, maybe you can't tell, but these are actually magnetic. Actually, maybe you can see that thing right, right there. That's the magnet. Um, and they all fit in here nicely. Woo! Uh, 
Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> the smallest measuring cup actually fits nicely with the largest measuring spoon. They actually came as a set with all the measuring cups and measuring spoons. Um, so don't drop them like I did. But uh, they were just from Walmart, actually. Really, really good find, though. Guess we'll have to wash all of them now. Although they're not hard to wash, at least. So. Oopsie. That was. <laughs> oh, I forgot the garbage right here. I already did the dishes like twice today. Actually, you know what? Life hack. I never thought about this. Maybe this will be obvious to you guys. But I actually washed this in the in the washing machine earlier today. If you have a washing machine, usually I just like do this by hand. Um, but this was like so much easier. It's, it's like, cleaner than I would have gotten just by hand. Um, so I clean my stove top all the time, but I don't always clean those because it's like a hassle. I have to like clean every single little bar, you know. What are you guys having tonight for dinner? Or whatever time it is near you guys. The point is that most people are not sensitive to all FODMAP containing foods. Yeah, yeah, so then if you figure out what ones are the problems for you, you can eliminate those ones and not unnecessarily eliminate um, other ones that are not an issue for you. Oh, I am not a FODMAP expert. This person said they know more about FODMAPs than me. This is just like the logic that I follow. <laughs> If you are having any sort of digestive issues. Alright, just gonna wipe off the counter, I think, and then we're pretty much good. Well, then I have to do the dishes again. Happy New Year from Buffalo. Hey, Happy New Year from Syracuse. I go to Buffalo a lot, though. I have friends in Buffalo. And a couple real estate properties. I had crispy tofu with brown rice and roasted vegetables. That kind of sounds like what I had for lunch. I made, um, the other day I made like an orange sauce. I could probably show it to you. Um, not my favorite, although I didn't put in as much sugar as they said because I was trying to be a little bit healthier. Um, it tasted just a little bit too, like, actual orange. Um, which is exactly what it is. But I was trying to make like sort of like an orange tofu or something like that. Um, not bad. But I liked, uh, I made a general so sauce um, from scratch like a couple times, and that was that was really good. That was, I just might prefer general so sauce over the orange sauce. But that sounds really good. Zucchitos, I don't even know what that is. Probably make a stir fry with tofu for dinner. Oh, yeah, with that, I had like, I was like tofu, rice, and uh, some roasted carrots with that orange sauce. True, I went through all of that and found almost anything spicy for me. Oh, okay, so like anything spicy will kind of like give you digestive issues. Maybe you can get some. We need that recipe, Craig. Yeah, so uh, it is, here, I'll, I'll show it to you. So um, this is the setup that I have at the moment. Um, this one is showing you guys in all the comments, and this one is the recipe. This one is from Tasty. If you just type in um, butternut squash mac and cheese vegan, it might just pop right up. Um, or you might have to type in, like, Tasty butternut squash, cheese, butternut squash mac and cheese recipe vegan or something like that. But very, very good. Uh, it's on my channel a couple times. If you type in, like, no, I'd Craig Butternut Squash. It'll probably be like one of the first ones to show up. Um, probably one of the best ones that I made video-wise is um, me surprising my mom with the, the recipe. I think that was like the first video I ever did with it. 
And I think after that, I probably had like just some like what I eat in the day vlogs or um, definitely some other live streams. I've, I've definitely made this before in live streams. If I am definitely a creature of habit. Like if I find a couple recipes, I just make those so much. <laughs> I just make them all the time. Um, like I make this one a lot. I, I haven't made chili yet this uh, this like winter fallish season. Um, but I do really like. There's like a classic chili. Honestly, I just typed in classic chili in Google and I got a non-vegan recipe. But you just swap out like the beef broth with vegetable broth, and you just swatch out the swap out the uh, ground beef with vegan um, meat, and it's pretty much the same. You do, they all want beans and they want spices and broth, and that's chili. You know, so super love that recipe. I think I'm, I might have had that on my channel, or at least in a live stream from, I think, last year. One of my favorite squash recipes is spaghetti squash enchiladas. Interesting. I've only had spaghetti squash as, like, spaghetti, maybe with, like, some vegetables or, like, maybe, like, some meatball-type things, but that's interesting. Yeah, April, that's that's basically the recipe. Um, I think there's a little bit, well, because you, you couldn't, Type it all at once. So, <laughs> but that she just uh, typed in the recipe. So if you guys want to check it out, that's the recipe. Um, but like I said, you could just totally Google it. I should have put it in the description. I think it's, I think it's too late. I don't think I can add that now. But maybe I can do it afterwards. All right. Who wants to watch me go do some dishes? Right, I'll just put you guys in the cupboard. And you guys can. See me. All right, hold on a second. You're gonna audio is gonna be different for a second. Oh, that that is making some noises over there. I'll bring you guys over there so you can hear it. You hear that? Yeah, I'll show it to you too. I don't know if you can really see the steam coming out, but maybe you could hear it a little. Watch my torso do some dishes and put away some dishes. Hopefully it's not too loud for you guys too. <laughs> Spaghetti squash pizza with impossible meat. Interesting. It's the thing. Oh yeah, I know what it is, but it's, it was just uh, making noises. Um, I've been so like I use this recipe a lot for my. Uh, instant pot, but the other thing that I use my instant pot a lot for if you guys watched my video I made a couple months ago uh, I make yogurt with it actually a lot soy yogurt. Um, so that's that I did that a lot this summer um, I haven't really made it um, But I definitely liked it in the summer Maybe it's like a summer thing for me Love my instant pot, but it's concerning when it spits the steam out like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, cause it's not even um, It's I don't think it's even at the point where it, like it's still the pressure still rising, you know. Why is watching other people cook and do dishes interesting when I do all these things myself? It's so boring. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I think it's like if you were hanging out with your friend and they were doing the dishes, or if you're hanging out with your friend and they were cooking, that would be still enjoyable. But if you're doing it like by yourself, then maybe not as much. Um, I think it's kind of like the same thing. Oh yeah, see, it's going off right now. Now it's finally the pressure, so it'll take four more minutes. And then just the pressure decreasing or whatever, and then uh, it'll be ready. Oh, actually, it won't because I need to use the immersion blender. Then it'll be ready. Um, but yeah, like I, I would go over to my friend's house sometimes growing up and just watch him play video games. But it wasn't so much like the video game. It's just like he was sitting on the couch playing like Call of Duty, and then we're just like talking about you know stuff that happened in school or practice or whatever. Maybe if we pretend to film it, like, what's up, guys? Today, we're going to do the dishes. <laughs> what kind of soap do you guys like to use? I am so grateful, though, that I have a dishwasher. Um, but my parents didn't get it until I moved out. I mean, now I have it now that I moved back in the house. But uh, now it's all mine.
another V for vegan powders. Yeah, those are actually from Sandra. I think Sandra might still be in the chat. Um, but she sent those all the way from the Netherlands when I moved into my first apartment. Um, and she said she wanted to give me a housewarming gift. And she was like, you know what, just tell me what pattern to make. And you can make it challenging. I was like, all right. And I sent her a picture of that. And she made them. Uh, they are kind of like opposites. She made green with white and then white with green. And she gave me two sets. So I have a set and my parents also have a set too. So we use both of them all the time. They're kind of messy as you can probably tell. Now I'm actually if Sandra's here, maybe she can tell me if I can throw them in the washing machine or if I have to hand wash them. Probably can't dry them anyway. You should try Swedish death cleaning. What? <laughs> is Sandra in here? Oh, here she is. Thank you, Sandra. I'm sure you already know this, but I still use them all the time. And I very much appreciate that housewarming gift all those years ago. Thank you every time I use them. After all these years, they still look good. Yeah, I mean... So most of the time when I'm taking stuff out of the oven, I use these like more rubbery ones because they they have like actual mitts. For the most part, um, I will put these like on the counter if I'm putting something hot on them so I don't ruin my counter. Um, so that's most of uh, what I use them for. But that's a lot of times when I'm cooking. <laughs> so I get a lot of use out of them. And my parents do the exact same thing too. Well, I really like I really like uh, the community that I've built. I like a lot of my subscribers. They're like just I think if you're nice on YouTube, if you're like a good person, and you're not like starting drama all the time, you're gonna attract good people. You're gonna attract people who are not toxic. If you're not toxic, whereas like, if you are toxic, you're gonna attract people who like to watch other people be toxic. So. <laughs> Yeah, if you cultivate people who just want to watch someone do the dishes and make some mac and butternut squash healthy mac and cheese at their house, they're probably going to, be, probably going to have good viewers. <laughs> I like you too, Craig. Oh, thanks, Cindy. Hopefully you can come back and see the store sometime. When we're actually there and we don't have to run out in like two minutes. And it's beeping, so we got another four minutes and then it just depressurizes and we have butter squash mac and cheese. You're beeping a lot. Okay, yeah. Wait. Oh no, it's on keep warm right now. Nice. Alright, you guys can probably see this from here. Look at that jet steam. That's why I keep subscribing to you even though I am not vegan anymore because I like your content and your parents are adorable. Thank you. And if you ever wanted to go vegan again, I'm here to help. Um, I think that too many vegans, when they hear somebody is no longer vegan, um, get too combative. And I think it makes for people not feeling like they ever could come back if they want to. Um, and I think that's really unfortunate. I think that people should be more understanding. Oh gosh, I'm hoping so, yeah. <laughs> bummer, non-plant-based people anymore. Yeah, it is, it is a bummer, but I always like to just make people feel very welcome, and then if they ever do want to come back, they can. Um, I'm always there to help. I never say, you know, I told you so to anybody. I think it's just a good practice for anything in life because nobody ever likes to hear I told you so um, but I'm always here to help if anybody wants anything I think that people who say um, like if you stop being vegan then you were never vegan in the first place I feel like it just makes other people feel like they can't come back to it. So then I think people are less likely to try it again if it didn't work out the first time, you know? Like if you just don't have a very welcoming environment. Were you supposed to release the steam? Yes, I release the steam and then once it's all out, 
then I'll take the top off, um, and then we'll start blending. Yeah, it's no reason to get personally upset. I don't eat much meat anyway. I use a lot of immune protocol diet because I have some sort of mystery inflammation thing going on. I have always been fat. Oh, wait, so is that like, um, is that like an autoimmune thing? Have you gone to like a rheumatologist or something about it? And this is the first time I have lost weight without trying super hard. Okay, cool. Well, that's always good to find something that works. And if you ever did still want to try veganism again, like maybe there's a way that you could find that it works or something. And if you do need any help, I'm always here for you. Okay, I didn't realize it was done. Yeah, super fast. <laughs> really, really fast recipe. That's one of the things that, one of the reasons why I really, really like this recipe is it's, it's like pretty affordable. It makes a lot of food. Like it makes a lot of sauce so I can have enough to put in the fridge. I can put some in the freezer so I'll have some prepped for quite a while. Uh, it tastes really good. Uh, it's pretty healthy because it's pretty much just the main ingredient is butternut squash. Um, and this is going to be my first time trying it with that new broth. So we'll see how that tastes. Um, so the dishes are pretty much done. I didn't actually make too many dishes. So I'll get the immersion blender out and we can start with that. Although I should, I'll see if I have enough to start the dishwasher. They're sending me to a rheumatologist on the 8th. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah, because I, I was going to go to a rheumatologist appointment, um, but my um, cerebral spinal fluid levels from my spinal tap uh, were like three to four times what they should have been. So they're like, okay, you clearly have either CADP or GBS, so like, we don't even need to go to a rheumatologist. We already know what the diagnosis is. Uh, uh, but I actually fun fact, I went there just for fun because we're like you know what we already had the appointment um we might as well go to it and i had something called spinal headaches so if you don't know a spinal headache is when you get a spinal tap and a spinal tap is when they stick a it's like it's like a pretty big syringe that they stick in your back they take out your cerebral spinal fluid um not all of it obviously <laughs> but they take out some of it enough to test um and that's when they tested for my cerebral spinal fluid levels because um, that would help diagnose me. And uh, it came back positive because it was like, th like I said, like three to four times the levels of like a normal person. And that's a pretty conclusive uh, diagnosis for someone who had either CADP or GBS. Um, but one of the uh, symptoms that you can have from a spinal tap is something called spinal headaches, which is basically when um, you have internal leaking of spinal fluid which is not as fun as it sounds um, basically when you lift your head above um, above horizontal then you have like instant like incredibly painful headaches but then once you lay horizontal again then you don't have a headache anymore like it goes away immediately um, so you have to basically you're like just laying down <laughs> so um, I had that for like a week I was literally just like on the couch couldn't even sit up or anything without like incredible pain um, so I somehow made it to the doctor's office and then I literally just had to lay down on the ground while we were there, like while we were waiting um, in the waiting room. And then they're like, well, we're not going to see you if you're just laying down. And then <laughs> they were like, we we're like, all right. So then they called an ambulance, actually, which I think they didn't they didn't need to. We I think my mom's kind of mad about that. Um, and then they took me in the ambulance and then brought me to the hospital. And then they were like. They, they had me at least laying in a bed in the hallway and like waiting. And then they were like, um, yeah, we can't see you. We're like too busy. So I waited there for like hours or it was like, it was something like that. Anyway, my neurologist was pissed that, <laughs> that he heard that they did that. Um, and then he, so he scheduled a blood patch, which is basically you go to this clinic. I think it was like a back specialist clinic. They took blood out of my arm and stuck it in my back, like right, like where the um, the, the leak was. So then it, they just used like a blood clot in order to sort of clot the um, the the leak of the spinal fluid. So really fun. <laughs> uh, but it was like I would if you never had a spinal tap, it's not terribly painful. Oh, hold on, I'm gonna adjust this real quick. I, th I think you probably should be able to hear me, but just in case, I'm going to wait until I plug the proper microphone back in. 
Uh, so if you never had a spinal tap, it's not terribly painful, but it's like one of the most uncomfortable pains I've ever felt in my life. Um, and the blood patch was even worse. Um, just very, very uncomfortable. Every, horrible. Every part horrible. <laughs> yeah. Well, spinal fluid, like, yikes. Yeah, yeah. Um, Jessica Kelgren had them pretty much break her by screwing up her spinal tap. Oh, wow. Yeah, maybe I should go check that out. Were you caffeinated before readings? It helps with headaches. Um, so yeah, they, they recommended because um, spinal headaches are like relatively common after you have a spinal tap. So they said like, you know, caffeine is good. Is good. They also gave me hydrocodone. So that was the only way that I was able to bathe myself. It's like uh, I would just get hopped up on hydrocodone, which actually they dosed me very well. So I just didn't have pain. I never like felt high or anything. Um, but I would get like a hydrocodone and I was, I really didn't like coffee, so I got Mountain Dew instead. <laughs> I just hated the taste of coffee. Um, so, and it, it, this was like, it was like 12 years ago or something like that. Um, and uh, yeah, that, that's how I would be able to get up to take a shower, um, is by caffeine and hydrocodone. And I'd go back, lay down on the couch again. So UK YouTuber, interesting. Um, okay, cool. So this is just keeping warm right now. And for, I'm sure all of you guys know, but that's basically why I went vegan, to help with my autoimmune disease. And then along the way, I was like, well, I'm already not eating animals. Like, it was real. I think it was really easy for me to open my eyes to, like, the animal cruelty and stuff, just because I was already not participating in it. I, that's why I think a lot of people have a much harder time making the connection, because they are actively participating in it. And I think that if I were introduced to something like that, um, when I was still actively participating in the animal livestock industry, I think it would have been like a lot harder for me to, to admit that. So that's why I have like a lot of empathy and patience and understanding when other people um, have like a little bit of cognitive dissonance with that, um, because it is really hard to admit that you're participating in animal cruelty if you like you buy um, uh, animal products. I love, yeah, I love beef too much to go veggie. I could give up the rest but not bacon or beef you know i i there's a lot of stuff that um before i went vegan i think i i think a lot of vegans basically would could say the same thing about pretty much any product whether it's like ice cream or cheese or for you with bacon and, and beef um a lot of people say that and then they do it and then they're like wow this is the best decision i ever made which i just wish i made it earlier all right let's get the immersion blender like, if, if you talked to me, like, 15 years ago and uh, said that I'm going to be vegan, I would have not believed you. <laughs> like, I had a friend in high school who uh, tried being vegan for a little bit, and I was like, why would you ever do that? That sounds terrible. He was, like, he was like making his own almond milk or rice milk or something like that. Um, he, was, he was trying all of it. <laughs> and I just remember feeling bad for him. And here I am. All these years later, he's not vegan, but I am now. <laughs> All right. I don't know if you guys can, you guys can't really see that, but the, unless I could put the tripod on something, I don't know how much higher I could make it. this is gonna work mm -hmm. I'm trying I know this is probably not very easy for you guys to watch but <laughs> can we do it Too much one way, it tips the other way. This is this is difficult. Oh, 
Why do you keep doing this? Oh my god, I give up. You guys are just going to have to trust that I'm doing stuff over here. Success. Yeah, that was not going to work. If I had a different, I mean, I have other tripods, but I don't know how long I'm going to use it for. I don't know if it would really be worth it. I thought I plugged it in. Did I unplug it? All right, so the trick with this is just um, not going like this. And then going down. You have to like already be in here. Otherwise it's gonna splash up at you. Like it just it'll still splash a little. You could also, if you don't have an immersion blender, you could do it like in batches in a blender. Although I I would not fill it up very much because I think it like kinda has a tendency to like expand with like when you blend hot things and like the it's it's not good. So <laughs> do it in like maybe fill out the blender halfway at most. But I do really like the immersion blender. An immersion blender like this is I think it's like 30 bucks maybe and if you make stuff like this or soups all the time it's very worth it i've used it for some other green soup i've made before too anyway let's get to it let's see if i can just do this with one hand I might need to even add some more broth. We'll see. We'll see how watery this gets. What did people use before blenders? I think they just didn't blend things, really. <laughs> not supposed to taste exactly like cheese um, but it's it's like pretty good sauce with some noodles if I wanted it to be very cheesy I could just add some vegan cheese that would make it real cheesy <laughs> well, this is definitely a more healthy sort of thing like the the cheesy thing is like the cashews and the nooch <laughs> A little bit of broth, a little bit more of this, this fancy broth. Link in the description if you want to check it out. Fifteen percent off. Use code No Eggs at checkout. All right. So we learned that we flip these up like this, and then open it like that. And now that we know that, it's pretty easy to do. how that does. I don't even know what pad thai sauce is. What, what is. I know what pad thai is, but I don't know what pad thai sauce would be. I didn't know there was a sauce specific for pad thai. Okay, this is definitely looking a bit better with some extra broth. Less chunky too, so we're going to add a little bit more 
see if that helps even more. Oh yeah, definitely got a chunk of cashew there too. <laughs> I kind of could eat this as like a um, as like a soup, I guess. Like I've, I've actually eaten it like by a spoonful because it's not like super rich and cheesy. But I do like it with um, some sort of noodles better. Actually, um, like some sort of like vegan ground beef or something like that is actually really good for this too. Is this just the sauce? Yes, this is just the sauce. Um, I think, yeah, I mentioned earlier, maybe you're here, maybe you weren't, uh, but I'm not planning on making the noodles today because I'm probably going to be eating this with like a high, like a high protein noodle, uh, like a bean noodle or something like that, um, like chickpea pasta or red lentil pasta. But I don't love how those get reheated, so I like to make those as I need them. Uh, just like boil as much as I'm going to eat in one sitting. So that's what I'm going to do. But this is definitely enough to have some in the fridge for the rest of the week and to freeze maybe some for next week or whenever I want to eat it. Food prep. This is making me hungry now. Yeah, <laughs> Good, good. If it wasn't making at least somebody hungry, I'd be worried. This is smart. <laughs> I, I really cannot recommend this recipe enough just because, like I said many, many times before, if you're here the whole live stream, it is a cheap recipe, it is an easy recipe, it is a quick recipe, is it, a, it is a tasty recipe, and you can make so much of it um, in just one sitting, and it's very easy. Uh, can't recommend it enough, honestly. I love it. I love it! My family likes it too. There's definitely still some chunks in here. Probably could even add some more broth to help get rid of some of the chunks. I'm gonna try some after I'm done blending this, uh, this stuff. Give a taste test. Uh, weekend food prep really does make it easier when you Eat real food as much of the time as possible. Craig is so right on it. Yeah, I've found out the hard way because there's so many times when like I want to eat healthy, but then I'm hungry, and the healthy thing, the healthy option, takes a lot of time to make. <laughs> so if you food prep ahead of time, you can have the healthy stuff and have it be quick. <laughs> You guys have ever heard of the audiobook um, Atomic Habits by James Clear, but I was listening to it earlier today and um, he was talking about the, the people who seem to have the most willpower don't really have any more willpower than you or me or anyone. Uh, they just don't put themselves in situations where they need to use the willpower as much. So if you want to eat healthy, if you put yourself in a situation where you're hungry and you only have quick unhealthy options or long healthy options and uh the long healthy options like you're just gonna be hangry and you're like you know what i just want to not be hungry now and then you're just gonna go for the unhealthy option and you're gonna be mad at yourself later on because you didn't choose the healthy option but it's because you didn't set yourself up for success um no liquor or chocolate allowed in my apartment yeah yeah so like you don't have to worry about like if you're not gonna drink or if you're not gonna eat chocolate if that's something you're trying to give up if you just don't have it in your house um, that's another thing that I was uh, listening to in the audiobook today. It was just like um, your environment has to do so much with what you do, like with the habits that you have, um, whether you sit down and eat a bar of chocolate or you have like a glass of wine or something with your dinner. Um, if you don't have those things in your environment, you won't crave them as much. Like if you have some cookies on your counter, you're going to want to eat those cookies, even if you weren't thinking about them before. But once you see them, you're going to want them. And you could do the same thing with like a healthy habit. If you have like, like I have a bowl of fruit over here. Um, if you want to eat more fruit, if you just make it easily available, if you just have it right out there, you're going to eat it. You know, like uh, a lot of it really has to do with your environment. Um, don't use your willpower if you, if you, yeah, exactly, out of sight, out of mind. Like, I think, like, we all know this stuff. We just have to, like, put it into practice. 
Um, like you or like one of you guys could probably like tell your friends to do this, but then when when it comes to you doing it, you know, I think that's the same with everyone, with me, with you guys, with everyone. Uh, it's just like a very human thing, you know. So try not to use your willpower if you can avoid it. Only on the things where you need to, but just you know, set yourself up for success. <laughs> my motivational speech for the day. <laughs> Alright. Now we will try it. It's the moment we've all been waiting for. Well, this looks hot, though, too. Ooh, it's super smooth. I It looked like it was chunkier than it was. Hmm. This is good. It's definitely a little bit more low sodium than I usually have, which is fine. I'm fine with that. Um, I think it's just because this has, like, no sodium in it, which I think can be kind of cool if you are trying to avoid it or if you just want to dictate how much sodium you have in uh, your, you know, your recipes. Um, but this is good. This is really good. Um, and it's... I'll, I'm gonna have to pour some out into like some containers so you, can, so you guys can see just how much there is. Um, or actually, I might actually just leave this out to cool for a little bit before I put it away anywhere. Um, that's definitely blended enough. I was blending that for a while. <laughs> I love butternut squash. Yeah, me too. Sodium is why I have to do my own cooking. Severe hypertension. Oh, okay. I was on an incredibly low sodium diet when I was on prednisone uh, for my autoimmune disease. Like, uh, when I was at my lowest, I was probably not even having like a couple hundred milligrams a day because I was just like, eating raw vegan, so just fruits and vegetables. I know, I know that low sodium life. Um, when I was raw vegan, uh, one time my, my mom got me some canned tomatoes and I was like, oh my God, it was like one of the best things I'd ever had in my life. Um, and it wasn't, it was just because I was having such low sodium that any sodium was like, oh my God, it's so salty. Like the salt from tomatoes is so intense. <laughs> Oh, that's what's Craig's making. So the recipe, if you want to Google it, uh, you can just type in vegan butternut squash mac and cheese. Um, I do have that on my channel uh, in I think a couple videos, at least one video though, uh, where I'm surprising my mom. So you could totally go check that out. Um, but you could probably find it by Googling. Tasty is the blog that I got it from. So if you find a vegan butternut squash mac and cheese recipe from Tasty, that's the one that I had today. Um, all right, so we have the, what do we even call that? What's the word? Kitchen. You know, like, or you don't even remember what that basic word is. That's what's going through my head right now. Oven mitt? No, these are mitts. Oven something. Yes. So I'm just going to let that sit there, and then I'll put in some containers later. Uh, but let's see, it is, you can see how round it is, or like how big it is like, compared to my hand. And it is also maybe like that deep. It's pretty deep for uh, for the for the amount of like, for like how wide it is. That's definitely... Multiple weeks worth. <laughs> Pot holder. There we go. I kept thinking oven something. <laughs> uh, do you notice any health improvements from eating raw vegan? Um, so, like, the whole reason that I went raw vegan, obviously, is to help with my autoimmune disease. Um, and I would say within two weeks, going from, like, non-vegan to vegan, I, like, all my symptoms of prednisone went away. Um, and I feel like 
my autoimmune disease was just healing faster. Um, I, I do find like, like, I, I don't really notice much difference between being vegan and raw vegan. Um, but I do know that like, since I've been vegan now, if I have headaches, I can trace them back to something. It's like, I didn't get enough sleep or I'm dehydrated or I got hit in the head really hard. <laughs> like, you know, there's like, or like, I've been like looking at the computer screen all day. Um, there's, there's always like a reason if, my, if my head hurts, I have a headache, but back in the day, I used to just randomly get headaches, like pretty commonly, uh, like at least once a year, I would get migraine, um, headaches and they were so bad. Like I've thrown up before, or I've had like blind spots. Like I was like, I'm going blind. This is my life now. Um, and like, I couldn't look at any lights. Um, nothing. It was just, it was terrible. Um, but that was like maybe once a year. Um, and ever since going vegan, I remember, um, it was like maybe a couple months into being vegan. I hadn't had a headache and then I had a headache from maybe being dehydrated or I don't remember exactly what it was, but I just remember thinking like, Whoa, this is weird. And I was like, Oh, I haven't had a headache in like months. That's crazy. I usually couldn't go months without having headaches. Um, so that's definitely one very, very welcome um, benefit that I found from being vegan, um, for me specifically. And I feel like before being vegan, after a lot of meals, um, my stomach, I just like feel like I had like a brick in my stomach afterwards. Uh, where it's like now I will really only feel like I had a brick in my stomach if I eat a very unhealthy vegan meal. So it still happens. But if I eat like a healthy vegan meal, um, I don't feel that way. Dehydration can attack so much of the body. I was so surprised. Oh yeah. Dehydration is no bueno. <laughs> Uh, so we need to trust what our bodies are telling us when we crave things. I'm always hot for nuts because I'm always protein short. So I agree and disagree, and you'll probably agree and disagree too. I feel like we'll, it's, I don't have like a hot take or anything about that. But I think sometimes, yeah, I think your body is craving what you actually need. And then I think other times um, your microbiome uh, is sort of telling, like kind of dictating like what you're craving um, and then also like your past experiences with like, oh my God, this dessert was so good. You don't need the stuff in that dessert. <laughs> you don't need refined sugars, but like you're still going to crave it. Um, and then also if you need protein, I don't think that you would be craving nuts because there's not that much protein in nuts. It's mostly fat. It's probably like 70, 60 to 70% of the calories coming from nuts are coming from fat. Um, a little bit from carbohydrates and a little bit more, I think, coming from protein. Um, and uh, even like on a vegan diet, it's really, really easy to get the amount of uh, protein that you need. So if you're eating animal products like beef and stuff like that, you're probably getting more than enough um, protein. Um, and really the only people, um, I mean, there's, there's multiple categories of people who need to eat like higher protein. Um, I'm trying to build muscle right now. So I try to have like maybe 140 grams of protein a day. Um, but if you're, if you don't have any athletic goals and you're like a relatively healthy person, you're not like an eight, like, I mean, we're all aging, but you're not like an older, uh, older person. You don't really need that much protein. Um, like I said, if you have athletic goals and you're trying to build muscle, yes, you need a lot of protein. Or if you're like, you have, if you're just like a, a kind of older person and you're aging, um, then yes, you're going to need some more protein. Um, not, not, not. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> agree. I think we both can agree and disagree with with what you said. I, I mean, it's tough too when like I can have like a whole monologue, but you can just like type a little bit. So I think I just like put some more nuance to what you said that you probably agree with. All right. Um, actually, this is like maybe cool enough. I could, I'll put some away and show you guys how much there is. I have, oh, you know what? I have some uh, containers in the fridge that I really like that I'd like to use for this. Um, oh yeah, so like this one I could definitely transport. These are some roasted carrots. I told you guys had, I, that I had some rainbow carrots. But you're just going to have to trust me I had them because the only ones I have left are the orange ones. <laughs> um, I swear there was purple and yellow ones in there. You're just going to have to trust me. Um, but that's all that's left in there. Uh, let's see. I could, even, I could probably even fit them in this. Like, I got these awesome like sandwich size containers so I don't have to use um, sandwich bags. Like one, it's 
Uh, I don't have to pay for sandwich bags because I have this that I can use over and over again. Two, uh, it's just de definitely going to be better for the environment because I'm not going to be throwing stuff like this into a landfill. Um, or like, you know, probably will eventually someday. But it'll be less than uh, if we're just be throwing bags into a landfill all the time. And it can also help your sandwich not get crushed. So it's really a win-win-win. Everybody wins when you get one of those things. I got them on Amazon. I clean this out. So this one is a little bit shallow. So we'll see how much I can fit in here. I wanted to use like one of the bigger ones, but that one has some stuff in there that I need to get rid of. Um, I had a ho not Halloween. <laughs> I had a uh, New Year's party last night, and Kara brought over some tater tot casserole. But I'm trying to be healthy, so like I was just telling you guys, like don't put yourself in a situation where you have unhealthy stuff in your house. Um, after this live stream, I'm going to go over to my parents' house and drop off that tater tot casserole. Um, Kara made some s'mores bars last night, which were so good, um, but thankfully she took them. Um, and I also had some pizza in my fridge, which I'm gonna give to my family too, because I don't wanna put myself in that kind of trouble, having pizza in the fridge if I'm trying to eat healthier. All right, ladle. Oh yeah, this is super smooth. I was blending this for so long when I was just talking to you guys. <laughs> it's very smooth. Um, and like when I went like this, a bunch of steam came out. I don't know if you guys could really, probably can't really see that, but look how smooth that is. Uh, maybe not. You can see. It's it's like like baby food. <laughs> smooth like baby food. Doesn't taste like. Well, I don't know what baby food tastes like. I think baby food is supposed to be like pretty bland, right? I don't have any kids, so I would not know. Alright, just so I don't get a bunch of condensation, I'm just going to put this, ooh, yeah, that's like almost filled to the brim. Um, I'm just going to put this in the fridge, just like this. It's quite a bit. I don't know if we can show you without tipping it too much. Alright, so that one. Let's see what other containers I got here. Open up. Oh, this one, this one should, hopefully this should fit the rest of it. A kind of bigger container. Veggie lasagna with your butternut squash sauce. Oh, and surprise the family at work with it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's a good idea. Actually, you guys want to see what my mom got me for Christmas? I'm sure you guys are dying to know. It was more of a gift for her, and I was like, I was like, this this is kind of, seems kind of like a gift for you, mom. And she was like. No, no, I, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to need a spatula now. And then I'll hold it in suspense to see what my mom got me for Christmas. I think you guys are going to like it too. Because it implies future videos that you will like. Because... I know some of the most popular videos on my channel are surprising my family with food. Hint, hint. Mm -hmm. That was good. It's not often that you can find things that are, I'm just going to say it again, it's like cheap, healthy, quick to make, easy, affordable. <laughs> I mean, I guess if you're making stuff at home, it's easier to do that stuff. But like if you're gonna like try to find stuff like that at the grocery store, it's tough to do. Unless you're just buying like a watermelon <laughs> and you're just eating it. <laughs> That's pretty easy to prepare. Not super expensive. You guys wanna do a fridge tour too before we show what my mom got me for Christmas? Alright. I'll show you how much sauce there was. I'm 
dots. This one, and this one, and maybe I'll put this one. Oh, so this is the tater tot casserole that Kara made. I don't know if she made it up or Googled it. And this is like some of the stuff that people brought over last night for the party. These are the mushrooms that I gotta get rid of. That's the orange sauce, we got a bunch of tofu, carrots, rice. Um, these, these are the rainbow carrots, I was not lying to you guys. <laughs> I don't think that they put a whole lot of the purple ones in there. I already ate all the purple ones. Just the yellow ones are left. These are not parsnips. They're rainbow carrots. Let's see. This is the tater tot casserole. Leftovers. Not going to touch them. I'm going to bring them over to my parents' house. Had them touch them. And then, you know, I should just take them out right now. And then this is the pizza. This is one actually from gar or from garlic. It's just, it's just roasted garlic pizza. But this one is from Wegmans that someone brought. This um, there's a buffalo chicken one at the bottom, two of them, and then this is like a supreme pizza. Um, let's see. And then oh, I have a little bit of daring chicken left over. Liquid mozz. That's this stuff's really really good for pizza. I have this cider. I don't know how long cider lasts for, but this has been in there since like Halloween ish. Um, and if you, if you guys have never heard of lupini beans, I don't love them, but these are a, I don't think they're technically a legume, but they're based, they're called beans though, but it's like 40% of their calories are coming from protein. So they're like one of the highest uh, naturally occurring protein plant sources in the world. Um, they're called lupini beans or lupin beans. So if you guys are interested in those, those are like a good, kind of like a snacking bean. Um, they're super, super high in protein. Such an organized fridge. Well, there's only one person. <laughs> Waiting, Craig. All right, all right. I'll, I'll answer some questions after I go get the gift. I'm getting it right now. I have it in my hands. All right, you know what? I'm going to take the time to answer some questions, and then I want you guys to guess what you think it is. I'll see if anyone got it right. What did your mom get you? You'll find out. Yes to fridge tour. Yeah. It's a hefty amount of sauce. Uh, did that come from one squash? Yeah, so it was, I mean, it was obviously squash. There was like some other ingredients, but it's mostly the ingredients were like squash and broth. Um, and then some, some other stuff, um, some other tertiary ingredients for flavoring. Pizza stone, that'd be a good one. A vacuum, I already have a vacuum. A food container, kinda. A toaster, I actually have two toasters. <laughs> I don't know where the second one came from. Um, so we're gonna go with April. April has the closest one. This is like a hot food carrier, and my mom even personalized it on Amazon. She's got to say no egg crack. Um, but now we'll be able to transport food more easily if it's in like a, what, nine by 13 pan or, or something, whatever that is. Um, that's why I was like, mom, is this really a gift for you? And she's like, no. <laughs> that's what my mom sounds like. She goes, no, it's not for me. Um, so that's a gift that I like, my mom likes. I know you guys will also like that too. That's neat. Oh, nice. Perfect for the veggie lasagna. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, If you want to, like, DM me that recipe on Instagram, maybe I could make that for a recipe. Your parents are a treat. Yeah, they're the best parents I've ever had. So, um, speaking of my parents, though, I should get going because I'm trying to go to bed relatively early tonight because I went to bed super late last night. Um, so I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to bring that unhealthy food over my parents' house, um, and I'm going to pawn it off on them. Um, Pyrex container for the food. Yeah, I do have some Pyrex. I don't have big Pyrex, though. I only have small Pyrex. So maybe I could add that. Because I was also thinking, like, I don't know if that... I don't know if it was if it's healthy or not to add hot food to plastic. I don't know if it's, like, a... Un like, I don't know. I don't know enough about plastic. But, uh, anyway, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for tuning in. Um, and hope you guys try this recipe. And how do I, oh, there we go. <laughs>